Now, the next thing on our agenda is, is some music. And uh, while we're setting up, I guess I will uh, tell you a little bit about music from China. This is a group that is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. And I'm happy to say for most of that time, they have had a, a relationship with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, many years ago, we, we had a series of Asian music. And music from China uh, contributed vastly to those programs. They not only present concerts, but they have a wonderful composer's uh, competition where once a year you can hear new compositions of Chinese music being played, usually at uh, uh, Merkin Hall on the west side. Um, they also commission music, and they have wonderful family programs. They do a wonderful uh, arts education program, and I believe also a youth orchestra. Uh, if you would like to learn to play any of these instruments, you can get in touch with one of the members <laughs> today and choose your weapon. Uh, the music we're going to hear today uh, I believe are masterpieces of the repertoire. And now, are you going to tune up? <laughs> okay, now music from China. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Susan Chang. I'm the director and founder of Music from China, and I'm also a uh, uh, musician in the ensemble. Um, so this afternoon, we are very happy to be here to play some of our repertory for you. And we have a group this afternoon. We have a group of five musicians playing actually all string instruments. And so I guess this would belong to, to the uh, the silk part of the silk and bamboo Chinese ensemble, uh, because the, the bamboo usually refers to the to the flutes, um, and the and the silk refers to the strings that that people used to have on some of these instruments, and so our string ensemble consists of instruments that produce sounds in different ways. So there are the uh, the bow strings, the pluck strings. And of course, there's the hammer dulcimer, which is a combination of a string instrument and a percussion instrument. And I'd like to introduce you to our musicians. Um, in, in the far end, there's Wang Guowei, who is our Erhu player. And so he'll be playing various members of this Hu Qing family, consisting of uh, spiked fiddles that have only two strings. And, um, and they're played by a, a bow, which is made up of a very flexible bamboo stick. So here's the bamboo part of it, and very flexible, and that's very important in playing this instrument. And there's the horse hair on the bow. And it's important to note that the horse hair actually is put between the two strings. So that means the bow is actually fixed to the instrument. So that's a very unique feature of the erhu. And also, there is no fingerboard. So um, if you think of a violin where you press down the strings and the strings are stopped by a fingerboard, there isn't any on the erhu. So that when you play this instrument, you can use different degrees of pressure, you know, pushing down the strings. And then you can, um, you can create very different kinds of vibratos and sliding motions. And so that the instrument sounds very much like a voice. And you, you'll be able to see some of that effect later. Uh, and then we have two instruments in the ensemble. They are rang bodied. And they're both called ran, R-U-A-N. And um, they're flat on the front and the back. So Cao Yingying is holding a zhong ran, a medium-sized ran. And I'll be playing the big one, the da ran. Uh, so th this instrument actually dates back to the, uh, to the Tang Dynasty, when there were some really great 
Ron players. And one of the greatest, the masters of this instrument, his name was Ron Xian. So that instrument is actually later named after him. So it's really a, uh, a guitar-like instrument. And Helen E in the middle is playing a modern hammered dulcimer. And the, the dulcimer actually originated in, in Persia, uh, in the Middle East, which is uh, Iran today. Uh, so this instrument, we call this yangqing, which means a foreign instrument, so for obvious reasons. So it's an import to China, but nevertheless, we have been using it for the last 400 years. So, so we just love it. It's, it's an important member of, of all the ensembles. And uh, it's played with bamboo sticks, very flexible bamboo sticks that come down and hit these sets of strings with. So it's, it, it acts like a piano you know, with the, the hammers. And then um, on, on this end is um, Wang Junling, who plays the zheng, and the gu zheng is related to the, uh, to the qing that you've seen um, in, uh, in Ken's talk. Uh, but it's a later instrument. The qing is an earlier instrument. So this developed later, but it appeared during the qing dynasty. That was when the qing emperor built the great wall of China. So it's a very ancient pluck string instrument. So, so the, uh, the drum, this modern version, has 21 strings, and each string sits on top of a bridge. And the bridge can be moved left and right. And by doing that, you can fine tune each string, or you can change to a different key. When we, uh, when we change keys, uh, we have to move the bridge so that it's, it would raise it a half step higher or moving to the left, uh, lowering it a half step. So during the program, we'll be playing diff uh, different songs in different keys. And you'll be seeing Wang Junling moving her, her, uh, her bridges around. Uh, so that is one of the purposes of that. So we're going to start playing our music for you. And uh, the first two pieces are ensemble pieces. And they represent, actually, I guess, southern style Chinese music, kind of ensemble playing. The first one is in the Cantonese style. Remember, this Cantonese is very southern China. And it has a very descriptive title called Thunder in a Drought. So you might have to kind of use your imagination to, to see if you actually do hear the, the, the roar of thunder. You may and you may not. But the point of the music is that um, during the dry season, when you hear the roar of thunder, it means that the, uh, the rain will come and everything will grow again. And so, so that's the, the idea, the spirit of uh, something good happening. Uh, and then the second piece is called Melody of the Purple Bamboo. And it's also folk ensemble playing that comes from the region south of the Yangtze River near the city of Shanghai. So these are two examples of Southern style ensemble music. Thank you. 
uh, the first two pieces that we played. Wang Wei was using two different types of erhu. Did you hear the difference? The first one in Cantonese music, it was an uh, um, instrument called gao hu, which means a higher pitched instrument. And then the second piece was the regular erhu. So now he has this, the, the regular erhu again. Uh, of course, when I say regular, I mean that this is the instrument that is used uh, most frequently, or found most frequently in all the Chinese ensembles. And now we have a duet between the Gu Zheng, or the Zheng, and the Erhu, and it's called Fisherman's Night Song. And from this very descriptive title, you, uh, you can expect that the music is about a scene of nature, very descriptive. And um, it, it, I, I guess it describes this very peaceful scene at dawn, um, at the end of the day, well, it's not dawn, I'm sorry, it's the other way around, at, at twilight, when the uh, fishermen return home from the sea. And so they are enjoying this very peaceful uh, lake uh, as they're going home. And then at the thought of returning to their families and resting for the day, it fills them with, with a lot of uh, pleasurable expectation. And so you can feel these different moods in this music. And uh, this piece is originally a solo for the Gu Zheng, but we also like to perform it as a duet.
Next, the four of us are going to play a northern style folk song called Crescent Moon at Dawn. So um, this time, Wang Gui uses a northern instrument, very typical. This is called Ban Hu, where before the Gao Hu and the Er Hu, the resonator is covered by a snake skin. Now the Ban Hu resonator is a wooden soundboard. And so its sound is very piercing, very, um, uh, very energetic. And so this is a very typical northern musical sound. And in this song, the music kind of captures that moment at dawn before day breaks. When if you look up at the sky, you might still be able to see the crescent moon hanging up there. So it's very peaceful and you maybe want to go back to sleep. And uh, so it has, has that kind of a feeling. And so it's both soft and lively.
Uh, next one is also Cantonese music, and it's a very um, popular song that is always associated with the Mid-Autumn Festival, which we just celebrated two weeks ago. And so this is one of the major folk festivals of China, besides the Chinese New Year. And so at this time in, in southern China, uh, because the song comes from Canton, in southern China, that um, <clears throat> in the evening, people celebrate it in the evening. When, when it's dark and the moon has come out, people hang, hang up lanterns and the families would get together. And the, the symbol of the moon, the roundness of the moon is very important in Chinese culture because it, it represents the life cycle, that it never ends. And also, when people look at the moon, they think of home. So it's also a symbol of reunion, family reunion. And so this song is always heard at this time, and it's called Autumn Moon Over a Tranquil Lake. Next one is also obviously nature related. It's called Birds in the Forest.
Wang Weiwei is going to come out again and play a solo on the Erhu, which is called Variations on the Song of Yang Guan. This music is actually based on um, an ancient poem, a very famous poem from the Tang Dynasty by a great poet called Wang Wei. And the title of this poem is called Song at Wei Cheng. And in this poem, the poet is expressing his sorrow, his sentiments, at parting with a dear friend. And I'd like to read you a translation of this poem. A morning rain has settled the dust in Wei Cheng. Willows are green again in the tavern door yard. Wait till we empty one more cup. West of Yang Gate, there'll be no old friends. So it's just sentiments at parting from a friend. And um, in the Tang Dynasty, there were many poems that were written, that were created. And it seems that m many of these poems were actually sung. Uh, music was put to them, and they were, uh, I mean, uh, and they could actually be sung. And in fact, in ancient China, a lot of the poets were also musicians. It's part of their, their learning, their education. And so we know that this music dates from the Tang Dynasty because the, its music has been um, preserved in an instrument like the Qing. In fact, it, this song is played on the Qing, and, it, and the Qing is the only ancient instrument or instrument from ancient times that has its own notation system. And so this tradition has been preserved. And so today we know what the song of Wei Cheng sounded like during the Tang Dynasty.
Wang Junling will perform a solo on the Zheng called Ravens Frolic in the Wintry Water. And the music, the solo music of this instrument falls into regional styles or schools of playing. And one of the major schools is the Kejia style, which is of southern China. And so the music basically is, is pentatonic, five notes. And in this piece, the, uh, the third scale degree is often raised uh, a half step. And you see her do that by pressing her finger uh, over the string to make it tight, to raise the pitch. So this is a uh, very, very descriptive piece, very playful.
this time, Wang Guo is going to bring out another member of the Hu Qing family, and this time it has a larger resonator than the previous ones that you've seen. So its name now becomes Zhong Hu, means a medium-sized Er Hu, and、uh, we're going to use this instrument to play Mongolian music called the grass on the grassland. Now there are certain characteristics. Every,、uh, whenever you hear Mongolian music, because it reflects the、uh, the lifestyle of, of this, these people, and so first、uh, reflect on the on the geography of Mongolia. It's the Mongolian steppes. It's full of grasslands, lots of open spaces. So in the music, one will always get the feeling of openness, spaciousness, and、uh, and then Mongolians are great horsemen, so the nomadic people. So you will hear the sound of horses, galloping horses, in in terms of the rhythm of the music, and in this piece on the grassland, the instrument, the tunghu, is used to imitate a Mongolian cello-like instrument called the morin kuer, which is the Chinese people call the horsehead fiddle, and、um, and and this instrument is used to imitate singing, and the Mongolians practice a style of singing that is. That is called throat singing, and so that is reflected in this music as trills that you see Wang Guo perform, and the trills span an interval of a minor third, and so all these characteristics put together creates this、uh, a tableau of life on the Mongolian steppes.
we're going to stay in Mongolia and end our program with a rousing Mongolian horse race song.